Hello, I'm in another house. I'm making a habit of this. Every time I see a property on the board for a tenant turn, uh, I'm gonna try and stop by and do a video in the house. It uh, went down really well the last time I did it. I did a, uh, a video, I think it was two weeks ago now, in, in the property that was on the tenant turn. And I, I sort of gave you a bit of a, a long-term case study. And uh, I have very literally written the, the numbers down on the back of an envelope here. So I've got here, I've, I've accessed my, um, we use Zero, a bit of accounting software, so I can I can log in. Um, I've had this, owned this house for, uh, for eight years, as you just said, it's slightly over. And uh, we bought it for 52,000 uh, pounds. The renovation at the time was 11,000 pounds. Right now, it's worth £125,000. It's probably worth a little bit more, but that's what it's mortgaged at right now. Um, that gives you a capital gain of £62,000. Uh, monthly profit throughout all that time is £280 per month, which was £3,360 per annum, and £26,880 in eight years. Add the two things together, the £26,880 profit in uh, eight years, and the capital gain of £62,000. That's £88,880 in eight years. Uh, my return on investment is infinite because I haven't got any of my own money in this. Um, there's a new facility on YouTube right now. I'll put it in the, uh, in the video. I'll put you to a, a, a video series that we did, I did, uh, on how to build a vital property empire, leaving none of your own money in the property. That's how we got the infinite return on investment. So I'm going to do that long-term case study in as many houses as I can. Very quick and easy. Um, probably did, well, I didn't go into it as much detail as I did in the last property, but they're the, they're the figures that you can literally write down in the back of an envelope. Um, that's not really what the point of the video, but as I thought as, as I'm here, I might as well give you the, that information. I think the key takeaway fact from all of these case studies is buy a house, keep it for the long term. This is eight years. Um, if you looked at the numbers, a year in, two years in. I, I know that that profit actually included um, quite a lot of expenditure. We, we spent a bit of money, you know, we had to, had to do, um, we had to put a new roof on it. So that included putting a new roof on, that's that, that, that monthly profit brought the number down. But the longer you keep it, the better it does. And that capital growth is really gonna make a, a big difference. Um, one of the, the sayings that gets oft quoted is, you know, property will and has doubled in value every 10 years. Uh, over the long term, if you take the long term numbers, of course, some 10 year period, it's gone down, but if you take the long term, therefore, whatever the value of your property portfolio, 10 years later, it should have doubled. And that's your capital gain. Um, now, the, it's much more likely to happen the longer you keep a property, which kind of brings me on to the main point of the video. I've got a question, and the question was, uh, interest only or capital and repayment on mortgages? So before we start, I'm going to give you the usual disclaimer. We don't give financial advice. I couldn't advise you that way. You need to speak to a mortgage broker. They need to understand your situation and you need to make an informed choice from there. However, I've got, I've got a, an opinion. I've got some thoughts. I've got some things that I, I, if, I, if I tell you why I do what I do, it might, might inform you. Um, all, all of the figures that I've just quoted you and in the last... Um, uh, update and that, that last case study I did. In fact, any case study I've done, unless I've pointed out specifically otherwise, and I can't remember one that didn't, which probably tells you something, are interest only. So we're not amortizing the capital, we're just paying interest on the mortgage. So at the end of the mortgage period, you know, whether it's 10 years, 25 years, 15 years, whatever, you still owe the capital and you would have to pay it back. Um, the thing to remember straight away there is of course, um, in within maybe every five to 10 years, you'll be refinancing and that resets that time. And you can just keep going with that as long as the, the values go up, of course. Um, even if the values didn't go up, if they stayed the same, you could refinance at the same level. Um, if they went backwards, there's definitely a risk there. Um, but if uh, values went backwards over a 25 year period, personally, I'd be very surprised at that. Um, so th that's that. Now, why, why do I think that interest only is, um, why, why is it right for me? So first of all, it makes sense on a month to month profit and loss basis. If we amortize this loan, uh, I wouldn't have the extra cash in my pocket to do e either one of two things, maintain this property properly um, or put towards buying new properties. 
I have managed to probably buy um, another two properties um, from the cash that this one generated by putting it back in and buying more properties. So that, that, that's reason number one. Um, but then from a mathematical point of view, I think it just makes sense. Um, and I, and I think one of the, the things that we would always encourage, I'd, I'd always speak to a landlord and say, you know, th this is something you need to have in your head, preferably written down, and it's your ambition. And it sounds a bit sort of, you know, what's that, what's that got to do with it? But um, your ambition is where you want to get to. Not only does it push you forward and say, this is what, what, what we want to achieve, or this is where we want to get to. It also tells you when to stop. And big part of this answer, you know, interest only or amortization, I notice that my, my sort of attitude to the question changes as I get older. I, I notice that as I speak to other landlords, the later on in their life that they are, I think their attitude changes a little bit. So your ambition will tell you what you want to achieve, specifically talking about being a landlord and properties, how many properties you want to own. Perhaps it's an income level, perhaps it's a cattle level, whatever it is, you're here and you want to get to there. And that's, that's the ambition. It's a good thing to have an ambition. It pushes you forward and it tells you when to stop as well, uh, or at least reassess. Now, if you've got that written down, and you know that for the next 10 years, you're going to be buying a house every quarter, a house every year, a house every month, whatever that is. Every property you buy, assuming you, you are going to mortgage it, and if the choice is between interest only or capital replacement mortgage, you know, you're gonna mortgage it. So what we're choosing now is not whether we're gonna mortgage it or not, it's whether or not we're going to pay down the capital. So I'm gonna buy, let's say 10 houses, and that's my ambition. And every time I do that, I'm going to get a mortgage. Mathematically, what is the point in on properties one, two, three, four, five, let's say we bought five, paying down capital whilst I'm still in the process of buying properties six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Banks charge you money to borrow money, not just on a monthly basis, but every time you take out a loan. There's a, there's a fee to take the loan, not just the percentage. They will often, quite, quite often, charge you to put the money back in. So on a mathematical basis, if you're still, your ambition is still growth, then why would you be paying down the, the previously bought properties while still adding to the portfolio? Building a property portfolio is all about good debt management. You've got to feel really comfortable with it. You've got to have well-serviced debt. You've got to buy the right house in the right area where the rent level is the right um, ratio to the value of the property so that you can always feel comfortable owning and servicing the, any, any debt that you put onto that property. Um, what, once you've achieved your ambition, maybe you might start paying them down, maybe. Um, maybe you'll reassess your ambition and you'll get going again and you, you'll go somewhere else and you'll, 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 you'll want to go again, in which case maybe the, the, those same rules apply. I just think it's an interesting thought process to um, know and understand everything around um, what we just talked about there, uh, being able to make that extra profit every single month because you don't have to um, amortise the loan is useful. It will mean you'll buy more properties earlier in your life so they'll have matured and taken advantage of that long-term capital growth later in life, probably when you actually need it. Um, so yeah, that, that's, my, that, that's my thoughts around that. Hopefully that's answered the question. Um, work out the numbers yourself. I think also added into that is the idea of you know live, living a life. I'm probably going to get a bit preachy now as well, but uh, I think it definitely makes a difference and it makes you feel more comfortable. But living a life that's you know, spend less than you, know, you could almost call it frugal. I, I, I sort of um, I definitely view you know, the life lifestyle that I live is, is reasonably frugal uh, relative to the income that uh, that's there. Um, but you know. No credit cards, no personal debts, no um, you know, saving up stuff before you buy it. You know, the usual common sense stuff. Um, if you're coming from a basis of that, as saying, you know, then taking out loans on properties. Essentially, I've only got loans on property, nothing else. No credit cards, no personal loans, nothing like that. You know, If I want something, I will buy it and I'd save up for it. And I think doing that and having that as a, as a starting point means I just feel very comfortable doing what we're doing with, uh, with the properties. So yeah, hopefully it helps, answers the question and gives you a bit of a, a rounded, um, rounded answer as well. So get yourself an ambition 
and um, work towards that. Uh, we run a uh, monthly discovery call at the moment. Uh, there'll be a link there in the description. If uh, anybody's got other questions, they can email in to inspire at forthelandlords.com. Um, you can book on a discovery call, follow the link in the description. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos in the same vein. Bye for now.